Recently, I've been wasting money on eBay searching for broken consoles. I do this because my inner tight ass really likes cheap things, but also because I get a thrill out of bringing something back from the dead that may otherwise be destined for the bin. And plus, repair logs make really great content for this channel. My latest acquisition is a Tommy Caveman from 1983. Eddie's electronic toys have always been desirable, so I jumped at the chance to buy this because my collection is devoid of such. It was listed for $50, with the seller claiming it didn't turn on. I figured this would be a pretty routine repair, and since working models usually go for at least $100, it fit my criteria perfectly. Well, it arrived, I plonked some batteries in, and what do you know, it does turn on after all. I'm not sure what the deal was when the seller tested it, but I'm counting my lucky stars. It was decently filthy however, so I thought I may as well give it a bit of a clean. Originally, the idea was to upload two videos, one of me repairing it with another being a review, but since it only requires a wash, lucky you is getting a two for one deal just for this video. The first order of business was to dismantle the caveman's plastic casing into as many separate parts as possible and give them all a good scrub. This assembly is super easy, but there's simply been six Phillip head screws on the bottom, two of those being found in the battery bay. To my surprise though, the bottom two were missing. Has someone been inside this before? Once all the screws were removed, I turned it back upright so the top part of the casing could be lifted off. Two more screws enabled the control housing to be lifted up as well, and from there the separate switches could be removed by pushing in tabs. Removing another two screws will allow the lens to be removed, and behind the vacuum fluorescent display, I found another two screws that allowed that and the circuit boards to detach from the lower half of the casing. However, there was still a tangle of wires attaching those modules to where the batteries and power adapter can be plugged in, so instead of desoldering them all, I instead planned the lazy approach where I simply cleaned that portion of the caveman with a toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol, while everything else went in the sink. I took the chance to examine the electrical workings while I had it open, and couldn't see any proof that it had been worked on beyond manufacturing. So, I have no idea why the screws were missing. It's also here that I saw what was likely the CPU. It's an NEC D553C, and I say likely, because boy, do NEC sure make it difficult to find the spec sheets. Everything does seem to indicate that it is indeed the CPU, and I couldn't see any other ICs, but no one else on the internet seems to have a damn clue as to what it's rocking either. Anywho, the disassembly was now complete, and I had a collection of parts ready for some soap. The controls were easily the filthiest. Before that though, I started with the bottom half. After giving the glass over the VFD a courtesy wipe, I then got to work scrubbing the outer casing, removing as many small marks as I could. Luckily, this bottom section was easily more unblemished compared to the top half, but regardless, it cleaned up well. As promised, the rest was simply scrubbed in a warm sink of water with dishwashing detergent in it, and then rinsed in another sink of clean cold water before being left overnight to dry. And, after reassembly, I'm quite happy with the state it's in, especially the control panel. I was particularly worried about the paintwork on the outer lens as it was already starting to disappear, but luckily the cleaning process didn't remove any more of it. It's at this point in the video, I should probably tell you what the Tommy Caveman is all about. Tommy seems to be the major manufacturer, but it was also found in the UK under the Grandstand name, which is my model, while Americans could find it under the Tandy name in Radio Shacks. I've always been a fan of VFD portable electronics, although my collection so far comprises of only a few calculators. So, I was glad to find this. I do also own a few modern imitations, but these actually use segmented LCDs instead. Fakers. In Caveman, you play as a caveman. This caveman is seemingly hungry however, because he wants to steal a fire-breathing dinosaur's eggs. Armed with just a stone axe, the caveman can navigate from his cave to the dinosaur, throw the axe at it, which temporarily incapacitates it, and if it happens to have plopped out an egg at the time, the caveman can grab it and store it in his cave. The more eggs you steal, the more points you'll earn. However, there are plenty of dangers for our dear caveman. The fire-breathing dragon is one, especially the fire bit, but as you progress there will be pterodactyls flying around that can swoop you and take a life. These bastard things will also steal your eggs, however they can be taken out with the axe as well. Additionally, in later levels, there is a volcano spewing lava that can kill. Great, more fire. Initially, the game starts you out with four lives, but every 2,000 points will earn another. The game just keeps looping levels, getting harder and harder, but the overall goal is to steal eight eggs to store in your cozy but quaint cave. There are a few other aspects of note too. For one, if you don't steal an egg within eight seconds, it will hatch, and I quote, 
cause the dinosaur children to laugh and make fun of your caveman. That must be demeaning. There are two gameplay modes, amateur and pro. While amateur mode will scale the difficulty up as you play, gradually introducing obstacles, the pro mode jumps you straight into the action with even the first level featuring pterodactyls. You must also retrieve an axe from the cave every time you throw one, while in the amateur mode it automatically reappears no matter where you are. The Tommy Caveman is a sleek piece of hardware. While seemingly bulky compared to today's standards for the type of game it plays, I'm sure it would have been a real treat to own in 1983, especially if you were a child and didn't own a console or home computer of the time. At the front is, as you'd expect, the controls and the screen. The controls consist of a lever that allows your Lisa Simpson-esque caveman to go from left to right, a switch that changes the difficulty, another which turns it on and off, and finally, a fire button on the right. These are spaced in a way that is quite comfortable to play. The VFD is set in low enough that the viewing angle is comfortable if playing on a table, while that black shield-like thing I washed before does a great job of darkening the area around it, making it perfectly visible during gameplay. It's not really much to look at around the back, although there is the power adapter socket on the right hand side if you're not interested in batteries, and some handy instructions printed on the bottom. The device sold for $40 in 1983, which equals to just over $100 US in the present, so it appears to have held its value if eBay pricing is to be trusted. Otherwise, it sold for £20 in the UK under the grandstand name, it's in these adverts you can see clones, such as Munchman and Astro Wars. Bet you can't guess what those are meant to be. If you're unable to travel to 1983 however, these are readily available for about $100 online like I've before mentioned. Otherwise, I saw plenty of auctions too, so you may be able to find it for a cheaper price if you're lucky. The alternative however, if you don't want to spend the dollars or whatever your respective currency, is of course the Yield Faithful Mame. I won't link to where I found the ROM lest I get my pants sued off, but I'll let you write now that it is possible. Although, I did have issues getting it running correctly. It could just be the way I'm using MAME since I haven't been proficient in its use since I was 13, but whenever I ran a game, the caveman would completely disappear. This is probably caused by a silly issue that could be rectified if I put some time into it, but since I own the real deal, I didn't bother. So, there you have it, the Tommy Caveman. I guess this could be called Junior Caveman vs Dinosaur if you're into that sort of thing, but whatever you want to call it, it's a fun little game that screams 1980s for all the right reasons. I like it a lot and hope to add similar devices to my collection soon.